Hello and welcome to the beginning of yet another Code With Me series, where we're going to be building a messaging application from the scratch. This app is called the Inbox app, and it has nothing to do with other possible messaging apps with the same name. What we're doing here is building an app which allows users to exchange messages and read messages, and we want to build an app which is highly available and highly scalable, right? This is a complete development process. We haven't seen any of my Code With Me series. This is a complete process starting from the ideation, figuring out what we're gonna build, the architecture, the design, the development, and I'm gonna be coding this application as you see. You're gonna see every line of code being written and you can actually follow along if you choose to do so, which I highly recommend, by the way. Again, the goal of the app is to build an architecture and build an application that can scale and stay performant with millions and millions of data records and hundreds of thousands of users. I have completed building this app and I've recorded this whole process. I'm gonna show you the demo of the final result of what it looks like. I have logged in and this is what the app looks like. Right? It's called the Inbox app. I have a list of folders on the left-hand side, folders which are predefined, inbox, sent items, and important, and uh, user-defined folders that I have uh, mocked over here. Uh, I have the email listing page uh, panel where I have the emails that I have received, okay? Uh, each email has the subject, who sent the email, and when it was received. So this was received a few moments ago. Um, I can click on an email to view that email, all right? And I can reply to it, I can reply all, or I can go back to the folder. Now, this is tracking when an email is read and it's not highlighted anymore, right? It's a read email now. Another thing you notice is the number of emails, number of 100 emails that I'm tracking in the folder. So when a folder gets an email which is 100, it is going to put that label there in terms of how many emails are how many hundred emails are available. Now let's say I click on one more, you see the number of hundred emails reduces by one, as you would imagine. I can compose an email. Let's say I compose an email to myself. What I can provide here is the GitHub ID of the person I am sending the email to. And uh, let's say I do hello, and then body is test. I can submit this email. And now I get the email to myself because I sent that email to myself, right? I can click on it and I can reply. I can reply to a bunch of people. Let's say I have another GitHub ID who's, uh, for, to whom I wanna send the email. I can send that, uh, I can type that GitHub ID over here and this is gonna go to both those people in the two, right? It's comma separated list. When I reply, it's gonna get the subject and add a re on top of it, it's a reply to that, like a typical email application would do, and it maintains the thread so that you know what you reply to is gonna show up below it and you can submit and it's gonna maintain that thread, all right? So these are some of the features of this inbox application. Again, the focus is to make this in a highly scalable, highly available way. And uh, this is the app that we're gonna build so that we know that this application is gonna scale for hundreds of thousands of users and millions and millions of email messages, right? That's the goal, and this is the app. Now, what are the technologies I'm using for this? The technologies are very similar to the previous Code With Me series that I did for the Better Reads app. If you followed that along, all of these technologies should be, you should feel right at home with them, all right? The application tier, is Spring Boot. I'm gonna be building the application and all the URLs to be served by a Spring Boot application. If you've been seeing my channel, you know that I'm a big fan of Spring Boot. Spring Boot is a very popular choice for building backend applications and you know it's kind of like a, an obvious choice for me when I'm working on backend applications in Java. For the data, I'm gonna be using Apache Cassandra, right? Apache Cassandra is a highly scalable, highly available application database and that is what helps me 
address the goal of building this highly scalable and highly available application, right? Cassandra also auto scales. It can add nodes and bring down nodes. It auto scales up and down depending on the load. And if you aren't familiar with Apache Cassandra, it's a NoSQL database. It's not a relational database. It's a NoSQL database, but you can use it in various different ways. You can use it as a columnar database. Like you have relational tables, you have columns. You can use it like that. If you want to use it as a key value database, you can use it as that. You can use it as a JSON document database, or you can get rid of schemas. You don't want schemas, you can use it without schemas as well. Uh, what we're gonna be using for the Apache Cassandra DB is a hosted database solution by uh, Datastax. It's called Astra DB. The advantage of using Astra DB is you don't have to set up Cassandra yourself. There's a free tier, you just click a few buttons and then you have a hosted Cassandra solution available, right? So Cassandra is, um, I'm a big fan of Cassandra for building these scalable applications. And uh, this is what we're gonna use for this application as well. For uh, security, I'm gonna be using Spring Security. We're gonna do OAuth login with GitHub, again, similar to our previous code with me series. And then for web page rendering, I'm gonna be using Timeleaf, not using any fancy JavaScript frameworks, just Timeleaf for rendering this UI. It does the job, right? I have some decent UI working. Again, the focus for the series is the backend building scalable, available applications. Uh, what do you need for the series? Well, you need to have the JDK installed and have some kind of an IDE, okay? I'm gonna be using VS Code for this. The whole series has been recorded by me recording this whole application on VS Code, but you don't have to use VS Code. Any Java IDE will do. You wanna use Eclipse or IntelliJ, anything is, is gonna work just fine. They're all Java IDEs. You can pick your IDE of your choice and follow along. Uh, that's the first prerequisite. The second prerequisite is you need a free Datastax account because you don't want to be hosting uh, Apache Cassandra on your machine. You want the true distributed Apache Cassandra and you don't get a distributed instance if you're just holding, uh, standing one node on a single machine, right? Which is why uh, I have a link in the description to go get that free account from Datastax, set that up, and you have a hosted Cassandra instance that you can use to follow along this code, right? So go click on the link in the description, which is the second prerequisite, right? The first prerequisite, have JDK and an IDE to code with. The second prerequisite, click on the link in the description and get your free account so that you can have an Astra database up and running. I'm gonna I'm show you the steps of how to set this up, both the Spring Boot application and the Datastax application so that you're all set to follow along the series. Now, here is a possible question you might be asking me if you have been following the Better Reads series, Code With Me series. Uh, the previous series that I published on this channel, I had a Goodreads clone with kind of the same technologies that I'm using over here. So the question might be, well, I followed along that series. Do I really need to follow along this one? The answer is yes, of course, but let me tell you why. The Better Reads Code With Me series had a lot of stuff involving uh, setting up the database, right? Seeding the database, preparing the data and all that stuff. This series is more of application development, right? There's more of feature development. We're not gonna be seeding the data. There's not a lot of loading the data, preparing the data and making it available. It's more application features driven, right? So this, even though the tech stack is the same, the process of building it is kind of different. And also I'm gonna be covering a lot of concepts that we didn't cover in the previous series. For example, one of the features that we're gonna be using is the, is the counter column of Apache Cassandra to build this, this counter that you're seeing over here, right? With Apache Cassandra being a distributed database, the concept of something like counters has very different, different implications, right? So this is one of the examples of things being a little bit different, right? So uh, I hope that answers your question. Let's say you watched the previous series, you followed along the previous series. Uh, even if you don't wanna follow along this one, at least watch and make sure that you're aware of the concepts that I'm covering in the series that I didn't tackle in the previous one. However, if you didn't code with me there, I highly, highly recommend you code with me here, right? This is an advice that I give for all of my code with me series. These videos are not meant for you to sit back and watch. I expect you to spin up your IDE and actually write the code, okay? This is what helps you get all those concepts cemented in your brain and uh, watching me code is helpful, but it's not gonna help you as much. The completed code, state of the code, at the end of this Code With Me series is published on GitHub 
and the link to that GitHub repository is in the video. I'm gonna make sure it is in every video of the series. So make sure you have that as a reference in case you get stuck or in case you need something to copy paste from. I'm gonna make certain commits at certain key points in the series. So if you're stuck at a certain point, you can go look at the commit for that checkpoint and then you can get the code from there or you can just get that particular commit and start building on top of it, right? So this GitHub repository is available for you to use as you follow along the series. Um, I'm gonna be releasing a new video of the series every three days. Uh, so make sure you stay tuned and follow along if you're viewing this new. If it's been a while, then all of those videos will be available for you to watch together if you like and uh, follow along. But whatever you do, make sure you follow along, all right? So set up Java JDK, set up an IDE, and you know click on that link in the description to create your account so that you're all set to start writing code. So I will see you in the next video where we're gonna start from the beginning, right? This is where I started this whole idea. I'm gonna start from the beginning where I'm gonna think out aloud what features this messaging application needs to have. We're gonna chalk out the user requirements, the non-functional requirements, and we're gonna go from there and we're gonna build the Inbox app. I hope you're excited to get on this journey with me. So I'll see you in the next video.